Hello everybody, welcome to Bobonomics, I'm Bobo, and today I'll be covering the 20 most important basic terms to learn when investing. If you want to get serious about investing, especially in individual stocks, you need to know some of the basics. Especially for individual stocks, sometimes people will just pick a random company that they like or a business that they've heard of and then invest in it, but usually this results in a very minimal return. Over a given period of time, like let's say 20 years of annualized returns, the average investor makes less than 3% return, while the stock market, like let's say an index such as the S&P 500, it makes roughly 8% in return. So as you can see, the average investor that usually doesn't know too much about what they're investing in makes less than half of what the average stock market will return proportionally, and they're barely even outpacing inflation. So here are 20 terms you should know to at least be able to get started investing and then hopefully get more advanced knowledge from there. Number 20, let's start with a simple one, a broker. A broker or a brokerage firm is an entity that buys and sells investments on your behalf. Usually it would be something like Robinhood or Ameritrade or First Trade or whatever. Number 19 is a blue chip. A blue chip stock is basically a company that has a long history of good earnings, good balance sheets, and is usually pretty well known and often gives dividends. Amazon, Coca-Cola, Facebook, those are considered blue chip stocks. Number 18 will do dividends. A company will sometimes pay dividends, which is literally just a little payment that comes with your stock. Usually dividends will be paid like a few times a year, and it will literally be like 25 cents per share, a dollar per share, depending on what you invest in. Think of dividends like bonus cash. Even if your company's stock isn't growing, you're still going to get a few cents per share even if it's not performing well. Sometimes companies will cancel their dividends or reduce their dividend yield, but that's usually unlikely and doesn't happen unless they're like really hit. Maybe I should have started with this term, but the next one is a stock. A stock represents ownership in a company. Stocks and shares are usually used interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. Companies divide their ownership stakes into shares. A share is usually a small chunk of the company. So what most people think of when they think of investing is individuals buying shares of a company and then hoping that the company performs well and grows so that the little chunk of business that they've bought grows and they're actually making money off of it. Appreciation off your stock is probably the main way people make money from investing, but like I mentioned earlier, you can also make money through dividends. Next on the list will be a few things, just stock exchanges in general. A United States stock exchange is just a trade exchange for buying and selling securities. It's an organization, basically. The two most famous stock exchanges that trade stocks are the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, which is an abbreviation for National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations. Number 15 on the list is a price-to-earnings ratio. The price to earnings ratio is a number you can see on most apps, here's a picture of Robinhood, and it will show you basically how much you pay for each dollar that the company earns. If a company reports that they've earned $5 per share and that same stock is selling for $75, you can divide 75 by 5 to come up with a price to earnings ratio of 15. The higher the price to earnings ratio, the more there is expectations for higher earnings. Some value investors or safer investors don't want high earnings per share because that usually means more volatility. So it's really up to you. There's no set good price to earnings ratio. So you can compare it to other companies in the industry or compare it to the same company with its past self. If you're comparing two stocks, let's say like American Airlines and Delta Airlines, since they're in the same industry, you can usually compare their price to earnings ratio and see which one is probably going to be more aggressive in earnings. Even if a price to earnings ratio is really low, if you think it's going to go up, it could actually be a better pick than something that already has a high ratio. Anyway, next an important term is index. An index is a tool used to statistically measure the progress of a group of stocks that share characteristics. This can include a group of stocks, a group of bonds, or a group of other assets. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 are two of the most famous indexes, or indices, however you want to say it. Next is a recession. A recession is defined as two consecutive quarters when a country sees a negative economic activity, usually a decrease in GDP growth. Another more general but important term is yield. This is associated with dividend investing often. Your yield represents the ratio between the stock price paid and the dividend paid. A stock trading at $100 per share with a dividend that amounts to $6 per year is going to have a yield of 6%.
Next, let's talk about income statement, which is one of the three important financial statements used to report a company's financial performance. And it basically reports your revenue and expenses to find your net income. Not your income, the business you want to invest in, but yeah. The next of the three most important financial statements is the balance sheet. The balance sheet will report your liabilities and your assets. It's important to look at a company's balance sheet, and you definitely want to make sure they own more than they owe. The third most important financial statement is the cash flow statement, and it just summarizes the amount of cash and cash equivalents entering and leaving the company. If you know all of these terms well, you basically know the fundamental aspects of investing in the stock market. Now let's talk about some stuff that's not particularly about individual shares. A bond is an investment that represents what an entity owes you. Essentially, you lend money to a company or government, and you're promised that the principal will be returned plus interest. These are typically seen as less risky than an individual stock, and also lower returns from an individual stock. Another term to note is an ETF, which is an exchange-traded fund. They work like mutual funds, which is just a mix of stocks, bonds, and other underlying assets often, but they're not like mutual funds because they're bought and sold on stock exchanges. I'll go ahead and include mutual funds since it's like an ETF, but it's basically a fund that's managed by a professional portfolio manager, um, and it's usually a mix of bonds and stocks. Some funds typically come with higher fees than other investments since the account is actively managed. Many people invest in mutual funds for retirement because they're usually not very risky and they have decent returns, a little less than individual stocks, but it's less volatile. Remember, with stocks you can make a lot, but you can also lose a lot. Similar to mutual funds, we can talk about hedge funds. These are alternative investments that use pooled funds. A money manager or registered investment advisor sets up this type of structure as an LLC or a limited partnership. These are usually for high income investors and basically the manager raises money from all these investors and then invests and manages the money hoping to make everybody some money. Usually you have to be rich or a very high income earner to invest in a hedge fund though. On the note of retirement earlier, we can also talk about an IRA, which is an individual retirement account. It's a tax advantaged account. There are several types of IRAs that I can define in the future, but basically anyone over 18 with a job can open an IRA for themselves, but not everyone will have every access to all the different types of IRA. Now let's go back to stocks for the end. A market capitalization is the number of shares outstanding times the current share price of a company. The largest companies have market caps over a trillion dollars. Capital gain or capital loss is the difference between what you bought an investment for and what you sell it for. When you hear capital gains tax, that's basically a tax on all the earnings you make from your investment. So if you made $200 from the stock market, the capital gains tax takes an additional tax off it, so you actually make less. If you have capital loss, you don't have to pay taxes because you're not making any income or profit. A bear market is a market that's falling. It's basically a market that has a downward trend. A bull market is a stock market with an upward trend that's usually optimistic. Well, that's 20 terms, so that'll be the end of this video. Thanks again for watching, hope you learned something new, and as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day.